Hey, Bo the Mechanic here. Uh, duh, we're working on my boat, my super that I showed you guys before. Check it out. Uh, I got the new floor put in, I got carpeted and everything now, and I hadn't run this boat since last, uh, last summer. And uh, it didn't seem to have very much power last summer when I bought it, but I ran it yesterday over the weekend, threw down a little bit. And uh, this is an 85 Super Comp, by the way. You guys can tell. And basically what's going on is the damn thing didn't have any power. Okay, so it wouldn't rev up. It would get on plane, but it just didn't have any ump behind it. This is a 351 Ford V8 motor. Pleasure Craft, uh, I guess, licenses it or whatever. It's got a velvet drive in it. So basically I pulled it in here to the shop, took the, took the top off, and yanked all the spark plugs out. And I did a compression test, and I compression tested all the cylinders, and it's really simple how you do it. You know, you just got to get a little compression gauge like this. Yank all your spark plugs out, and uh, thread thread your spark plug hole with this doodad right here, this adapter, this compression tester. You just thread it right in the spark plug holes, which are right there, right where the spark plugs used to go. So, you thread it in, and... Just like this. You hook a compression tester to it. What you're looking for is you want to have all cylinders. All cylinders need to have right around plus or minus 10%. So like if you've got a cylinder that say got 60 PSI in it, you know you got a problem. If you got a, you know, all the rest of your cylinders are 120 and you got one cylinder that's 60 PSI, that cylinder has definitely got some issues. You got something going on with it. On this specific engine, I thought this would be a pretty good example to show you guys. Okay, you know, I yanked all the spark plugs out. I started over on this bank over here, and I just ran all the way around. You, you know, when you do a compression test, obviously you need a compression tester. You want to set your throttle to, to full throttle, okay, wide open. And in a car, it's a little bit different than a boat. In a boat, you can just rev it all the way up, you know. Obviously, I can just take the th hand throttle. It's, it's full throttle with it, with the, you know, throttle completely open. But a car is a little bit different. You're going to have to, like, you know, uh, use a zip tie or something and pull the uh, throttle actuator on the car, which is actually right over here. You're going to pull that thing completely open, and basically that just helps air get into the engine a lot easier than if it's closed, because it's trying to pull, pull the air through the butterfly valve. Anyway, so you've got your, you got your throttle wide open, yank all your spark plugs out so there's no resistance. You, you can't do it one at a time. I've seen a lot of people try that. You, you can't just take one plug out at a time. You've got to take all of them out, okay, because it's a lot easier for the starter to spin the engine over. You yank all the spark plugs out, and you go one at a time, and then you mark down what your number was, okay? For instance, this thing, like I said, I mean, I started over there and it was 120 PSI on all cylinders, which isn't, you know, really awesome, but it's not really bad. A gasoline engine like this, a V8, it needs about 100, 90, 90 PSI to 100 PSI to get, a, a, get any type of good compression, good horsepower out of an engine. You start to get below like 195, 80 PSI, you're down real low and you're not going to build any type of real power numbers. This motor healthy probably had like 140 PSI. And so now it's down to 120. So all those four cylinders on this V8 are 120 PSI. I get over here, and I've got zero PSI on this cylinder over here. The next one has zero PSI. And then these two back here are back up to 120. So what that tells us, as I'll show you here in just a second, watch, I'll spin it over. You can see it builds no compression at all, which means that you've got a massive issue. As you can see, the dial gauge didn't even move at all. It's still sitting at zero. So this, these two cylinders, two offending cylinders, this one and the next one, if I threaded it in, have absolutely no pressure. Okay, they're not even building anything. So that means something's wrong. Okay, so the next question is, well, what the hell's wrong? So I'm gonna go ahead and yank the valve cover off to look at the valves and see that they're all opening and closing. A lot of times on these old motors, they got push rods. Old V8s have push rods. It's a long rod that runs straight down into the cam and it sits on the cam and goes up and down. And so sometimes they'll bend, the push rod will bend. Sometimes, uh, you know, you could have a valve problem where you have a cracked exhaust valve and that would allow no compression to happen because, you know, it's just an open hole. So the piston's just moving air. What I would really expect to see is some compression, you know, I would expect to see at least a little bit, 60, 70 PSI if things were sealing. So, I mean, I've definitely got an issue of things not sealing. You know, either the valves are not sealing, you know, or the piston rings are just totally destroyed. And I don't think that's what it is. I don't think that the piston, the piston rings, even in the most horrible condition ever, will still produce some power. Okay, some type of vacuum, just, just through their motions. Even if there's no piston rings in there, it'll still have some type of compression. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna yank these valve covers off and check for obvious mechanical problems. So here we go. 
So, as you guys can see, I yanked the valve covers off, and what we're looking at here is, let me show y'all, okay. As you can see, these are called rocker arms. This is called a push rod. All the push rods seem to be connected. They're, they're not uh, obviously bent or, or anything really obvious, glaringly, like where the rocker's broken or cracked or anything of such as that. So, we don't have a mechanical problem per se. So the next thing we're going to do is called a leak down test. As you can see, the engine is in pretty good shape, but what can happen sometimes is people over rev them and they can cause a lot of issues over revving the engines. So the next thing we're going to do is a leak down test. How you do a leak down test, okay? You can use your same little connector that you got right here, okay? You can unplug this. You're going to need a compressor, an air compressor. Okay, and see an air compressor, I can hook my air compressor into this line. No, I can't do it right now because if you if you aired it up, no air would go in the cylinder. I'll show you why. There's a Schrader valve right inside there, a valve stem right inside there. You guys can see it. So this is your common compression tester. Okay, you got to take that little valve out. So you're gonna need a tire a tire of valve stem remover. You take the valve stem out, this little thing inside here. It's basically a check valve, okay? It lets pressure in this hose, but doesn't let the pressure out. And so with the leak down test, we're not trying to do that. We're trying to put air into the cylinder, and we're trying to see where the air is going, okay? And I'm gonna do kind of just a little redneck leak down test. And basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take that valve valve stem out. I'm gonna thread this into that, this, that cylinder number one that's a, that has zero compression. And I'm going to just basically air it up with a compressor. I'm going to hook my com air compressor to this line. And it's going to shoot tons of air into the cylinder, okay? And it's going to bottom the cylinder out. What I'm also going to do is get over here on the, on the front of the crankshaft with a, with a socket. And I'm going to try and set it so that both of these valves are completely closed. So there's no pressure on either valve, okay? And we're going to see where the air's coming out, okay? And what it's going to do, you're going to either hear air coming out the intake or air out the exhaust, okay? One, one way or the other, the air is going to be making a hissing noise. Or you're going to hear it going through, past the piston rings into the crankcase, okay? So I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. Killer, so here we are, all right? Like I told you guys, uh, I bounced inside the shop and here's what it looks like, okay? This is just a valve stem from a tire and this is a, what's called a valve stem removal tool. This came in like a tire slime kit and I just kept it and threaded it on this thing because it gives me a little bit more leverage and I just kept it. They sell valve stem removal tools. There's actually like a nice looking screwdriver that has that tip on it instead of a flat head or a Phillips head. It has this weird looking thing on a bob. But you can just get a can of tire slime and get one of these for fucking free. But anyway, so just threads in there. And this is how you can remove all valve stems on tires if you guys ever had a question. So, see how that thing just threaded out? And I pull it out and see it's got threads on it. So that thing slides down in there just like a valve stem in a tire. That's what keeps your tire from deflating. Okay? So. Now, as you can see, this is a straight shot hose. It just sh shoots air into the cylinder. It would just shoot air wherever you put it, okay? But the second thing that I did, okay, is I got a socket wrench and I spun it over and I put this thing so that the valves are not, there shouldn't be any load on the valves right now, okay? And my suspicion is, is that maybe these two cylinders, the valves are way too damn tight, okay? Like a lot of times if you run an engine lean, almost all the time. If you run an engine lean, which means sucking unmetered air, okay, if you suck unmetered air into an engine, you're running it lean, it's not getting the proper stoichiometry of fuel to gas, okay, you know, air to gas ratio in the engine. So when you run it lean, it runs hot, and so unfortunately what will happen lots of times is the intake and the exhaust valves will pull up into the fucking cylinder head, okay, and they slowly wear out the very tips of the valve, okay. The very, very tips of the valve get super, super hot. They can't get rid of enough heat because they're, they're running too, too lean on air, or a little too lean on fuel, and it actually will slowly start to recess into the engine. And uh, you know, this would probably be pretty common in a boat motor because this thing has load on it all the time. It's not like a car engine where you put, put it in first gear, drive for a little bit, press in the clutch, catch second gear, it drops down to zero RPMs or a thousand RPMs. Boat motors just pretty much run constantly with the load on them. So, I mean, I'm suspecting that this thing probably has a leaking leaking uh, carb gasket somehow or whatever. And somehow this damn thing has been sucking air, unmetered air, for a long time. And it cooked these two cylinders for whatever reason. That's kind of what I'm thinking. But here's how we're going to figure it out. So, like I said, I'm, I spun with my ratchet until I got this thing 
to, to basically be in the neutral position, which means no valves are getting pushed. Now look, I'll spin it over for you guys a little bit so you can see. See, I'm spinning it right now, but it's not moving those valves. Okay, you, know, you can see it'll start doing it in just a second. Just a second, it'll start to move those valves. Uh, this is fun to hold a camera and do it. In a V8, you see like only two cylinders are ever a top dead center at the same time. So that's kind of how they work. See now, you can see this valve starting to go up a little bit. That rocker's starting to go up. See that? So right now, that valve is opening, okay? Right now the valve is opening. We don't want the damn valves open. We want no valves open. So, I'm gonna keep going until it tops out. This is fun. Okay, now it's starting to go down. Man, this sucks. See if I can do it this way. It's a lot easier for me. Okay, now you can see. There you go. There it goes. The other valve up, and now it's going down. See now, right about here, we've hit neutral. A neutral position with both of these. They're not going to go up or down. They should both be completely sealed. So right now we're on a compression stroke. There, there's two compression strokes. That doesn't really matter to you guys right this second. But we're either on the intake or the exhaust stroke. Okay. So, but right now. Neither, see, I'm still spinning it a little bit, but these aren't moving at all. So right now, this cylinder should be completely sealed. There should be completely sealed. The intake and the exhaust valve should be closed off. The piston ring should be holding pressure too. There should be nowhere for the air to escape. So when we thread that thing in and put air to it, we shouldn't hear the air go anywhere. But we'll see. Hey, killer, all right, so we're back. As you can see, I hooked my line up to my compressor. I've got it threaded right into that number one cylinder and it's dumping air like hell. So, you know, what we what I figured out is right here. Look, this is the next spark plug over. So right now what we figured out, this thing's got a blown head gasket. It's actually got a blown head gasket and the head gasket's blown right in between this cylinder and this cylinder. And when I put my thumb on it, obviously, it's building pressure because there's nowhere for it to go. But right now, see that? So this is kind of like the worst case scenario. Another thing that I tried right before I didn't actually show you guys is loosening the valves. Like I said, sometimes these things will get lean and you can, when they get lean, like you can hear right now, see that? You can actually hear it coming from the intake now, okay? Because the valves are too tight. So what you probably got going on is a couple different conditions. It was probably run lean and eventually blew the head gasket. And uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to yank this engine apart to fix it properly. Put a new head gasket in it, and then you get the valve, the valve shim set properly, the valve height, valve stem height. Okay, but this is a good way for you guys to figure out what's going on in your car. All you gotta do have is, is really a compression tester, and you know some basic knowledge. Okay, and so basically, you thread this in for a leak test, and you can hear the air going somewhere, and it's going into the intake right now because, like I said, those valve stems are screwed up. So these two cylinders are are broken. The only way to really fix it is to take it apart and bring it to the machine shop. So that's what I'm gonna do next.